But let's start at the beginning. Tell us about your family, how you ended up in Anchorage, Alaska, just a little bit about your background story. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a great, you know, American story. Um, you know, I'm from American Samoa, and uh, my parents, they had 10 children. 10 children, I mean, 10 girls wow. and two boys, 13 in total. So, you know, we grew up over there in American Samoa, where we live is kind of like third world country. So we really didn't have much. My father is a veteran. He served in the Korean War, uh, disabled veteran. Uh, my mother, she stayed home, worked multiple jobs, uh, watching over his children. And, uh, you know, when we transitioned from American Samoa, uh, we made our way to Hawaii. We went to Washington State. And eventually we grew up here in Anchorage, Alaska. And that's where I spent primarily my childhood growing up in was Anchorage, Alaska. So, you know, Alaska is a great place. You know, great people, obviously, Kelly, Nikki. You guys are doing great things. Pleasure to be part of this community and also making a difference in this community and the community that I grew up in. So, you know, with that, you know, growing up in Alaska was definitely a big change. You know, Polynesian coming out to a colder weather system out here, it was a big change uh, for my parents and also for my, my family members. But we moved here um, with another family member, my uncle, uh, where my dad helped him join, help him join a church here to start a church for the Seventh-day Adventist uh, um, denomination. Uh, we lived with him and his five children. So there was about, about 20 of us living in a three bedroom apartment. Uh, and with that, you know, it helped my parents get on their feet because they had this thing called the permanent fund dividend, which a lot of Alaskan advantage of. And obviously my father did with his 13 children. Uh, so we were able to, you know, get back on our feet because that helped my, uh, mother and father get stable, uh, financially. Uh, but, you know, there were some challenges as I grew up uh, here in Alaska uh, as a kid, as a child. You know, I went to Mountain View Elementary, uh, went to Clark Middle School, East High School. The road wasn't always easy. And, you know, during my time as a youth, I had a lot of troubles that I ran into. You know, I got 10 beautiful sisters. So come when beautiful sisters come, there's some trouble that follow, you know. So as a brother, I got to protect. So a lot of times I was spending my time with the wrong crowd and also protecting my, my siblings and, and my sisters and ended up going down the wrong path. Uh, that's where in the educational system, you know, I wasn't very academically smart. So I had to find different routes. And when I mean different routes, uh, there were people in my life that stepped in and helped me uh, with that. So I went to East High School. And when I went to East High School, I ended up getting kicked out of the school systems. And uh, I remember like it was yesterday uh, when I was getting kicked out. Um, I walked in the principal's room uh, and my mother, she's just sitting there. She's sitting there with a suitcase mm -hmm. and she's sitting there with with my sister, Helen. She's older than me. Uh, at the time, she had a place over there in the valley with her and her husband and she had a son. And uh, my mother said that I'll be leaving to the valley that day. And, you know, as a kid, I'm like, wait, what? I'm not going out in the valley. So it, it was a big transition to come to Alaska already. Now I'm going to go out into, like, the neck of the woods out, out in the valley. So that day I ended up uh, leaving with my sister to the valley, and that's where I stayed with my sister Helen in the Matsu Valley, which was a huge blessing because that's where I was able to find the right people and get around the right people to be able to kind of change the trajectory of my my future as a young man. Um, so out there, that's where I was able to meet a coach, you know, a, a coach that really spoke to me in a way that helped me understand that I can change my future. Uh, he helped me realize how to focus. And once you become a pro in the NFL, focusing is really uh, something, that's a skill set. And that's a skill set that separates you from everybody else is being able to focus and really apply those skills to on the field and also off the field. So at a very young age uh, in high school, a coach was able to kind of instill that into me. And so when he when he gave me those tools, you know, obviously I started building my future. You know, I started building my future, which is why I created that nonprofit organization, uh, helping youth and really trying to give them the same tools that I was given as a kid to be able to kind of build their own futures you know, really take it and run. And so as a high school kid, learning these these tools of being a pro at a young age at focusing, uh, using my eyes and ears instead of my mouth, <laughs> a lot of, you know, a lot of individuals get it kind of mixed up. It was like, oh, you're big, you're fast, you're strong. 
But what really separated myself from everybody else was my mentality. And that's being able to focus at a young age. So I had to learn at a young age to become a pro. And for that, it, it, it's very difficult um, to do, but um, it's simple. It's a simple thing, but it's difficult. And, you know, and that's what we kind of see today in today's culture uh, and the younger generation, you know, those kind of values and those kind of things, you know, leaders uh, being able to step in and, and kind of instill in a younger future in our, in our younger generation for the future. I think those are the kind of things that we kind of need to get back to, uh, to be able to do that for a young generation. So just to continue my story, you know, this coach helped me realize that I can focus. And that's where I really started exercising that skill, exercising it in academics. I started focusing more in academics. I mean, there was a point uh, where math, you know, I'm very, not, not very smart math, but I was focusing every single day to where the teacher at that time noticed that I was uh, really trying my best to try to do my best in that class. And instead of giving me a C plus, he gave me a pass. <laughs> <laughs> so I was pass that class. So uh, I didn't get a C average, but I got a P, which means pass. And, you know, that really gave me confidence that, uh, you know, as I continue to you use that, utilize that skill to focus at a young age uh, with my eyes and ears, then I can really achieve anything. And so I started doing that not only in academics, I started doing that uh, in athletics, uh, where I started to listen with my eyes and ears and pay attention to the pros. How are they eating? How are they training? Who are the people that are around them? Who surround, how, like, where are they at most of the day? And then how many hours of sleep they get? So at a young age, I started doing those things. I started, you know, picking up these trends that these pros were doing athletically. And that's really where I took my game for football uh, with my body and I changed my body. So not only did I change my, you know, my mentality and my spirituality, I started changing my physical appearance. Uh, and that's where, you know, I started to excel. I started to excel in my athletics because I started to focus more, started to learn more, started to build my future at a really young age. So then I became very successful in athletics. But at the same time, when I started building my athletics, you know, I started building my home life. So I started to focus on becoming a better brother to my sister that I was living with. And my sister at the time worked at Walmart and uh, she was a stalker. She had two kids when I was living with her. And I had babysit those kids every single day and to make sure that her and her husband uh, were able to take care of us. So I had to become a really good brother. I had to re become a really good uncle. So I started focusing on how I could do that as well. And so at a young age, I started to become a pro at athletics. I started to become a pro at academics. And then I also started to become a pro as a family member. And that's what really, I think, kind of helped me uh, get through a lot of the challenges that I uh, went through at a young age uh, through my sports career was being able to become a better family member. Because at the end of the day, the only people standing behind you when you're losing and the whistles are gone are your family members. And so I became a better family member. And that's where, you know, a lot of support that I have now is still here. Teammates go, uh, teachers go, uh, you know, individuals, educators go, but family, they're, they're there forever. So anyways, to kind of cut it short, um, I was really not only setting the trend of excellence for myself, I was really setting the trend of excellence for the youth uh, that was part of my family. So now we have over 60 plus nieces and nephews in my family. Wow. And, and one of those nephews actually that was, uh, that I helped take care, um, they actually came to every single football practice in high school with me. Uh, the, both of my nephews uh, that my sister had, one of those nephews actually plays for the Baltimore Ravens now. So he is, he got drafted this year by the Baltimore Ravens. He was actually drafted uh, on my birthday. So April wow. 29th. And the same day that he was drafted, they also gave him my number in high school, number 71. That's so he, yeah, that's, that's all God. So God has a plan for everything. And he played a key role in that. And then the other nephew is currently playing um, uh, college football in California. So now they're being trend center, trend setters in our family, which is great. Because when you start seeing the fruits, and the, the labor that you put in, it starts to be passed on. And that's what you call generational wealth in our family. Yeah. Is being able yeah. 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 And that's what you change your, your family tree. 
in a really good good way and then you start to see the fruit the fruit start to blossom and then you just sit back like wow look at god 